today we will understand the IPsec how much you need to know for the interview purpose uh, let's start from the basic suppose we have a headquarter and we have a server place in the headquarter and uh, we have one firewall uh, place in the headquarter this is how they are connected and the another uh, side we have a branch branch office and they are also connected to the all the all the system in the branch are connected to the firewall of course they are connected via the switch but i'm just showing you the high level and uh, then this is the subnet for headquarter and this is the subnet for the branch uh, of course uh, there is the internet uh, from where we can connect these both uh, there is another method like lease line mpls but those options are very costly and uh, yeah you need to pay more however internet is not that much costly it's very cheap and with less amount of money you can get more speed uh, so we will choose the internet as an option so uh, what we need to do to connect over internet we know internet is not secure so we need to configure some kind of tunnel to connect these two offices so we will use here ipsec tunnel okay uh, to connect both the offices with each other we need to have some kind of ip address in our external interface here i have just added the private ip address but in your uh, scenario it will definitely be some public ip address so uh, uh, let's take these two ip address in our scenario so this is how the connectivity will look like so now you understand why we use the ipsec vpn to connect two different offices together and why they why we want to connect them together let's take an example in headquarter there are so many servers which has to be accessed by the other employees but those employees are uh, not in the uh, not working in the headquarter uh, but they're working in another locations you just take an example your headquarter uh, suppose is in london and you have another branch which is in india mumbai so mumbai want to access the applications uh, uh how they will access uh, uh okay so they cannot go to headquarter but of course they want to access when they are in mumbai that's why we create the vpn okay so that that's the purpose of creating the ipsec vpn let's go to the next uh <clears throat> ipsec vpn uh, basics how many things you need to know as part of the ipsec vpn uh it has two phases phase one and phase two phase one is used uh, for the device negotiation it exchange couple of messages device negotiation is like um, if we go back to our previous diagram we know that if vpn has to establish it has to establish between this and this firewall of course once the vpn is established the data will start transferring okay suppose here there is a payroll website in our headquarter and these guys want to access this website over the vpn right so after establishing vpn this traffic will go but before that these devices need to negotiate they need to create a vpn and that's the phase one in phase one device negotiation happens they exchange couple of messages so now uh, you might be thinking how many messages they uh, negotiate and what are the different ways to exchange those messages so there are generally two modes in phase one one is main mode which has six messages and another mode is aggressive mode which has three messages keep in mind that these messages are exchanged between those firewalls two firewalls as it is mentioned it happens the negotiation happen between the devices device negotiation okay so these two will negotiate the message they will agree on them and then uh, phase one will become up okay so we know now phase one and there is a phase two and uh, the purpose of phase two is the uh, transfer the data okay uh, for transferring the data the good thing is there is a phase two and there also a couple of messages has to be exchanged so that phase two tunnel will become up uh, so you can also consider phase two uh, like a tunnel inside tunnel phase two goes inside a phase one so it's more secure right so now again the same question how many messages are being exchanged so there are three messages being exchanged and in phase two we only have one mode that is quick mode 
Okay, so this is the high level of IPsec VPN. Again, the same thing. Uh, once the negotiation happened, phase one is up, phase two is up, then the, the data transfer will take place. Okay, so these uh, guys will start accessing the application. Okay, uh, again, continuing on the IPsec basics. Uh, there are other things that you need to know uh, why we use um, IPsec you know like to connect to devices uh, to connect to offices together so they can access um, the things like um, branch office can access the application place in the headquarter uh, like for the sake of the security there are three things that you need to keep in your mind with IPsec we achieve confidentiality integrity and authentication if you uh, see the confidentiality means your data is confidential nobody else can see your data and how it happens it happens with the help of encryption and there are different methods for encryption that's three days they are really weak but you will see, see the options a couple of uh, devices uh, however there are strong methods which are which are AES 128 and 256 you can use 128 that is also secure 256 is way more secure uh, but please keep in mind that if you will use higher uh, algorithm like uh, instead of AES 128 you will use AES 256 your file will need to do more processing to encrypt and decrypt the data it could uh, spike your CPU and RAM if you have a good firewall with very good configuration like high CPU high RAM big model you don't really need to worry about that you can just go ahead and use 256 the next is integrity integrity is like um, hash you can say hashing uh, we use integrity that uh, for the reason that your data is going from one place to another place it should not get changed like you sent uh, some somebody hundred dollar they should not get changed to ten dollar right this is just an example with the help of hashing we achieve that integrity that is not changed there are different uh, algorithms for that md5 and sha md5 is a weak and there are many versions of md5 but all of them are considered weak so better use sha sha again sha 256 is the strongest you can use that okay and uh, the third thing is authentication for authentication we have two choices again pre-shared key and certificate uh, most of the cases you will see everybody is using pre-shared key okay but the best and the secure method is to use these certificates okay so uh, there's another thing that you need to know Haddle. that's a short form created by somebody not by me and this is really nice uh, short form to remember uh, the couple of messages being exchanged if you remember i have told you that in uh, phase one there is a main mode and aggressive mode in main mode six messages gets exchanged now this is the time to think what goes inside those messages okay so Haddle is the information which goes through those messages. H is hash, A is authentication, D is Diffie-Hellman, and I think, yeah, I think here I have mentioned it completely. Uh, H is hash, and in hash, again, we just discussed SHA-256. Let's take an example. We are using SHA-256. And then authentication, you have two options, pre-shared key and certificate. Diffie-Hellman uh, is a key exchange method. This is a different topic. You can go ahead and check and uh, do search on that. But Diffie-Hellman, mm, um, with the help of Diffie-Hellman, we create a shared secret key. Okay. So uh, the another one is L, that's a lifetime. Just take an example that your key will not be expired uh, for eight hours. Okay. That's why we use lifetime. Then we use encryption. Uh, for encryption, you can use AES 120 or 256. Okay. Now let's see uh, what are the messages uh, goes inside. So there are of course six messages, but the good thing is like you don't need to remember all the six. First message and second message are same. The only difference is the first message is being sent by initiator and the second message is just responded by the responder so we have two things here to notice initiator who will initiate the communication responder who will respond to the communication okay so as i explained to you in the previous slide huddle information will go right so initiator will send the huddle 
information and responder will send its own header information and then they will say all okay and let's go to the uh, let's go and send the third packet which is i will discuss in, in a couple of seconds uh, before going to the third packet let's see what goes inside that we just discussed header this is the information that they share with each other they just uh, another thing to notice they of course say okay let's uh, use sha256 for authentication i'm not going to use digital certificate i will use pre-shared key also another thing to notice for an example uh, for question perspective or exam perspective if somebody is asking you like your password goes inside a first message no password doesn't go in a first message first message is all about uh, the methods that we are going to use okay so we are going to use the sha256 as a hash but hash doesn't go in first message only the method goes in that algorithm goes in that and diffie admin there are different groups for diffie admin so suppose we are using 19 suppose a uh, lifetime we said okay eight hours and encryption we are using 256 and the another guy will also reply with that notice here another thing so all other things i have kept same but encryption you can see i just mentioned as 128 and 256 the responder or the another party can have more than one encryption or hashing okay but he should have at least the one with matching with another party okay why that's so it's exactly same as suppose you are going to talk with a person and you know english the another guy knows chinese but if he also knows english then you both can talk with each other but he if he doesn't know uh English but he know Chinese you know Spanish so many other languages but he doesn't know English so you cannot talk to him even though he has so many uh, knowledge of different languages okay that's why at least one should match you can have more than one okay so now it's the time to go a little bit interesting see interesting picture so the first message it is of course from the initiator which we have seen here initiator he will send the message if you remember we have this ip address 0.1 and 0.2 0.1 is our initiator which is source and 0.2 is our responder that will become the destination okay the source port is 500 so 500 port is being used for ipsec vpn we will discuss this later and then you have here initiator and responder okay so there is an initiator a value that's called SPI, initiator value and responder SPI. Responder SPI is always zero. This is how you identify the message. Uh, second message will be exactly same, but how you will identify if it is first message or second message, this is from here you will identify responder SPI, okay? And then we are, which version we are using? We have ISA KMP internet security association key management protocol there's something else you need to remember this is used to uh, share this this is complete protocol used for key management okay so uh, we have 1.0 version that we are using inside that we can use ike version 1 and ike version 2 but i have not explained you that so you can just avoid that and then you can see this is proposal number one that's this is here the interesting part comes i told you that in first message header information goes so header can be up and down okay so that's just for you to remember so in header there was e that's encryption so you can see a b a e s c b c the key length is 256 for encryption uh hash algorithm they are using sha 2512 that's really strong uh group description is this one 2048 by the way, I have taken this um, uh, from the internet, uh, this screenshot to explain you. I think it's interesting for you to understand how it looks like in a white shark. So authentication method, we are using pre-shared key and uh, life type seconds, how many duration. Duration is like the same that we have said lifetime, eight hours. It is using eight, six, 400, okay? So the second message looks exactly same. See, everything is same. It should match with the first message. Of course, so everything is same. You can pause the video and you can compare. But the interesting thing here is you have responder SPI. Okay, how you will know then about the first message and second message. First message will always be having 
zero zero responder second message will be having responder but all other messages will also be having same initiated and responder key so the second second thing to identify second message is you need to look into this information they are called transform so we said huddle as a short form they are called a transform this is the information they're going to send each other okay now third and fourth message again so this is a negotiation of diffie hellman okay diffie hellman uh, there is a group we are, we said like we are using 19 group they negotiate with each other they could send a couple of messages that's uh, there is a mathematical formula behind that and if you know about that then you you know how they how it works with this help with the help of diffie hellman we negotiate shared secret key okay and if everything is okay most of the time uh, for the troubleshooting also you will never see any issue in message three and four if you if you will get a second message you will always get third and fourth message and the problem will come in the fifth message that's a good from uh, interview point of view and also troubleshooting point of view how our third message looks like this is what i told you if you remember uh, except message one all other messages will be having same initiator and as responder SPI. Okay, so from here, you can only identify first message if it is zero zero. You cannot identify remaining messages by looking just the packet. I can identify uh, by just looking into output any message if it is third or fourth. You can also do that. And how how is that? The thing that you need to notice in the third message, the nonce value goes okay this is nonce data this is like a random value they exchange okay if you will know the diffie hellman algorithm you will come to know why they are using this random value okay uh, another thing is if it is third or fourth because that again looks exactly same you will see exactly same it looks like okay maybe the nonce is different you can see nonce is different but that will not make you any hint if it is third or fourth message how you will come to know about third and fourth is from here source address and destination address if it is a let me go back if it is 0 0.1 we know this is our source and this is our destination if it is reply is coming we know it's a fourth message now let's go to fifth and sixth message so in fifth and sixth message identity that is peer id when you will configure the vpn there is option as a peer id if you do not configure peer id then ip address will go in that as a peer identity uh, then there is a pre-shared key in the first message we if you remember we have used method for authentication as pre-shared key instead of digital certificate but the value will not go in a first message value will go in the fifth message what else will go in this hash payload if you remember we use the hashing algorithm uh, i think sha256 we, we mentioned uh, the value the hash payload will go in this fifth message and the same thing from the sixth message okay and another important thing to notice if all okay then they're done phase one is up another important thing to mention uh, notice here is these two fifth and six are encrypted okay so you cannot see what's going inside that's the beauty of using main mode and that's also exam question they can ask like which uh, uh, message in ipsec vpn is encrypted so now from here you know that fifth and sixth are encrypted uh, this is how it looks like they are encrypted because pass your pre-shared key is going right so you cannot send your pre-shared key means your password over unencrypted channel right so that's why they are encrypted now here you can see how they look like again your dot one is our source and this is our destination uh, port number 500 this is from where you can identify this identification okay and you will see like fifth and sixth they have the same identification the previous one also has an identification the only difference is 0 0.2 right the this is destination is replying and if i go back this is source is sending the message okay this is all you need to know as part of phase one and high level of ipsec there's another thing that i want you to really notice that's the short form i mentioned e i i s a okay so what, what are this so this is 
a little bit additional information you really need to know. ESP, Encapsulating Security Payload. This is used for confidentiality and authentication purpose. Okay, uh, that's it you want to know. When phase one and phase two is up, not, then your data has to go uh, from one place to another place. At that time, you will see in the Wireshark, all the packets are ESP packet, encapsulating security payload. After that, you have AH, that's authentication header. This is used for integrity and authentication purpose. Interesting thing to notice here is in this we do not have any encryption like confidentiality if you remember that's for encryption right we do not get in the ah that what you can do uh, there's another way to use these both in the combination like esp plus ah okay because if you will go into detail in ah there are some benefits of ah so you can use that uh, if you talk about the 48 firewall, you don't need to do anything by default. They are using ESP. They are not using AH as for my knowledge. Uh, maybe they are using, but as far as I studied, they are using only ESP. Then there is a security association. The head of information that we have shared with each other, then they agreed. So that's called a security association. Uh, ISAKMP, you have seen in Wireshark, there was ISAKMP protocol that is used for like Internet Security Association key management protocol like this is for managing the key you negotiate couple of the packets all those packets are going from here and there with the help of isakmp protocol okay so sa is the same here security association they do over the internet for managing the key this is how you can remember that internet key exchange so you have seen like we were using version one in that if you don't remember let me go back because here is like IKE, Internet Key Exchange, and there are two versions, version 1 and version 2. Version, like mostly I see still version 1 is being used uh, widely, but version 2 is more secure. It's much better. There are a lot of benefits of version 2. Okay, so I would just say you just use version 2. You can see here there was somewhere version 1 is being used. So this is the IC, uh, IC version. These are the only things you need to know from interview perspective. And also, if you're working in a company, you only need to know these things. There is a hell amount of information on IPsec VPN. You don't really need to know uh, into more detail. This is a part two of IPsec VPN. In this part, we will understand what is aggressive mode. So let's continue. In aggressive mode, three messages are exchanged. And let's understand what those messages are. We have initiator and responder. So in this initiator is sending first message to responder. You can see in this we have HADL. We have understood what is HADL. H is hashing, A authentication, D Diffie Hellman, then L is lifetime and E is encryption. So this all information goes in the first message. But apart from that, the NAT T also goes, Diffie Hellman key data also goes and along with that as we know in diffie hellman nonce value is a random number that also goes in this message and then identification goes of initiator dpd goes dead peer detection and x authentication also is the part of this message from this you can understand that this message is equivalent to first four messages in the main mode because in main mode in first message hadle information goes the devices exchange handle information and then they say okay we both support these kind of hashing authentication etc and in third and fourth message diffie hellman negotiation takes place but in the in the aggressive mode that's happening in just first message in second message let's see what goes in second message exactly same information what has gone in the first message but apart from that NAT D and hash payload also goes in the second message. Hash payloads are of responder. So you might be thinking that we haven't seen the hash payload of initiator. Initiator's hash payload will go in the third message. So here is we have the third message. Let's see. You can see hash payload goes, but this goes in encrypted form. The third message in aggressive mode is encrypted. So this is shared in the Third message. Now you have understood the main mode protect the identity. However, aggressive mode does not support because in main mode fifth and sixth messages are encrypted 
and in fifth and sixth messages identity goes this is a very important exam question also and this question is also asked in interview many times so please keep that in mind so what is the key takeaway from this uh, video is that you understood that three messages are exchanged in aggressive mode it means it is faster three messages are exchanged but we also understood that identity is not encrypted so it means it's not secure it is fast but it is not secure the question is then why we should use aggressive mode or where we should use aggressive mode do we still use aggressive mode because it is not secure the answer is yes we do use aggressive mode and where we use the aggressive mode we use the aggressive mode where you have to configure remote vpn for the people who has to work from home for them we use aggressive mode and uh, also if there are uh, two sites and you have to configure the site to site vpn and one site has a dynamic ip address its ip gets changed all the time in that case also we use aggressive mode because the ip of this uh, device will change we cannot configure this ip in another firewall so this firewall will always act as a dial up so it will dial the vpns and the process will start so in these two kind of cases we use the aggressive mode i hope you like the video this was a theory and in my next video i will show you everything what we discussed in the world hi guys in our last video we have understood aggressive mode theoretically uh, in this video, we will see all of those things in the Wireshark. So let's continue. You can see we have aggressive mode, three messages as we have discussed previously. And then we have a quick mode, also three messages. But in this video, we will only discuss about aggressive mode. First thing you have to notice that 12.1 is uh, initiator as source and it is replying to 12.2. And then 12.2 is replying to 12.1 and then 12.1 is replying back. Okay, so this gives you understanding that it's not the only first message. They keep changing, so it is uh, three messages get exchanged. But don't make conclusion from here. Let's go into a little bit more detail. The another thing that you will see uh, your IP uh, sec ISAKMP that gets exchanged over port number 500. Okay, and another thing uh, that we have to notice is because this is a first message initiator SPI will always be there because source is sending the packet but responder SPI is always zero zero so this is really a question that will be asked in interview how you will identify first message in aggressive mode or in the main mode so you can say in the first message initiator SPI is always filled however responder SPI is not there because responder has not yet replied okay and then let's go what's there here we have the version uh, we are using ike version 1 and in that we are using aggressive mode if you would be using main mode you will see that here this is ike version 1 in ike version 1 only you have aggressive mode and main mode but in ike version 2 you do not have any kind of main mode or aggressive mode we will discuss that in our different video okay so let's go to the next flags this is really not interested only thing you can see like this is not encrypted of course we know this is not encrypted that's why we are seeing everything here nothing is encrypted in the first message and let's see uh, payload proposal okay this is interesting so this is the header information that I have told you so what goes inside that encryption okay which encryption we are using AES CBS encryption we are using and the key length is 128 which is secure uh, then you are using hash algorithm as a SHA, SHA2 uh, and group number we are using is 1024 bit uh, we are using uh, but the number is 4 and then you will see here pre-shared key we are using pre-shared key we are not using digital certificate another thing I want to tell you if both the hosts are using digital certificate you don't need to use the aggressive mode at the time that's also an exam question okay because digital certificate will never change we uh, have understood in our last video if there is a dynamic host uh, if there is a device which is getting IP address dynamically so its IP keeps changing right so you cannot put anything in the side to side tunnel in other side like what is the IP address of the uh, remote end so it will always dial up in case of digital certificate certificate will never change it will be same so in that case you can just use main mode okay so uh, 
what's the next next is a lifetime which goes in the seconds uh, so here uh, you can see how much lifetime is there 86400 so we have all the information of Harold and we have discussed that in first message net traversal goes and in second message you should see net detection okay so they said okay we will use net traversal and they detected the net so that goes in the uh, second message so they all are NAT T packets and then this is a key exchange so this is a Diffie Hellman I told you that uh, key exchange data is sent and also the nuns value is sent so these two information goes this is also exam question they can ask uh, what information goes uh, when I'm saying exam I mean interview uh, uh, I don't know why I'm habitual saying exam this is really an interview question and I myself also ask this kind of question what goes in the third and fourth message in main mode okay what goes as part of TV Hellman negotiation you can say key exchange data and uh, nuns data goes uh, as part of th negotiation okay and you don't really need to remember this number because the, uh, these are just random numbers so they will keep changing okay and then there is a identification in identification most of the time identification is always the public ip address means the van ip address because uh, the external van ip address is the ip from where you will initiate the tunnels right uh, that's the reachable IP address. So most of the time it is that but you have the option to put the peer ID and remote ID If you will put the peer ID and remote ID that you will see here, okay? And then you have a DPD dead peer detection I also told you that it will go there dead peer detection then X authentication will go there most of the time in X authentication username is there, okay? and uh, then what is this payload vendor okay this is all the information we have discussed in our previous uh, lecture let me go back and show you that I think here so you can see uh, this is second message we have not yet read that so this is all information HADL, NAT, T, DP, HELME, NUNS, identification which was IP address, DPD, DEADP detection and XAUTH we have seen all of these things in the Wireshark let's see what is in the fourth message if if I show you my slide I shown you Everything what was in the first message goes, but instead of NAT T, NAT D goes. Also, you will see hash payload here. Let's see uh, what we will see here. Okay, so version is there. Okay, we are using aggressive mode. And uh, as part of the security association, we have some proposal. Let's see where they are. They are here. The encryption, same en encryption, same key. So we are using SHA-2. Uh, shadow is here sharp we are using and the version is 2 but it got minimized when I click uh, okay SHA 2 and then you have a group okay so you can just uh, see all those things slowly by pausing the video and uh, what else mm, goes in that you can see that the uh, the version is also going this is probably the Cisco's client and the next thing is uh, dead peer detection okay uh, that goes there definitely both peer has to negotiate if they are that dpd is enabled or not okay if the peer is down they have to detect each other and then uh, what is this this is nothing interesting then xauth is there uh, what else you can see nat t nat traversal is there but we should also see nat d i hope i am in the second message Okay, so net traversal is here, net travel is here, and um, identification IP address is there. Okay, here is our hash. So hash data is going, that's what we discussed. Hash payload goes here, and here is your NAT D, NAT detection. That's what I told you, right? So if you if I go back, NAT D and hash payload are the additional things that goes in the third message. Uh, sorry, second message. Third message is magic. You don't see anything in this because this is encrypted, right? So, see, this is encrypted. Authentication, no authentication. This is encrypted at all. You cannot understand what's going inside that. So, theoretically, what goes inside that? Where is my packet? Uh, hash payload in encrypted form. Whose hash payload? Initiator's hash payload. Because the initiator never sent the hash payload. In the first message, he never sent. In second message, uh, responder sent his hash payload in third message the hash payload of initiator will go in encrypted form that's it in the next video where we will discuss the quick mode hi in today's video we will discuss about the phase two 
In phase two, we only have one mode and that is quick mode. All the packets of phase two are encrypted. So there is not much interesting to show you of all those packets, but we will understand what goes in those packets. Before understanding that, let's understand why those packets are already encrypted even before they have shared all their Hadal information and how they are encrypted. Uh, if you remember, we have already established the phase one tunnel and in that phase one tunnel, as part of message three and four, uh, we have negotiated Diffie Hellman. Diffie Hellman has helped us to create a shared secret key and with the help of that, the fifth and sixth message was encrypted. Phase two goes inside the phase one. That's why it is encrypted. So you can understand how secure it is, like tunnel inside tunnel, right? So that's the one thing. And now let's understand what things goes inside that. Uh, in the first message, which is sent by initiator to the remote host, remote host, we will say the responder. In the first message, a security association will go. You can also say security proposal will go or transform set will go in that you have your hashing algorithm, you have your encryption algorithm, you have your Diffie-Hellman group mentioned in that and uh, your lifetime will go that after how much time your um, after how, how much time your key should get expired. There are some other things that also you can enable. You can enable PFS, perfect forward secrecy. There's another option that you can enable as part of phase two that is anti-replay, but that is you set right? Uh, we will discuss anti-replay and PFS in our separate video, but let's continue. In the second message, exactly same kind of information which was sent by initiator will be sent by responder. So when the first message is sent by initiator to the responder, responder will match all those security proposals. If they are matching, then it will send the second message. Now these two messages are enough to generate a shared secret key. You can compare this with aggressive mode. There also we have three messages and in three messages, they just generate shared secret key. And the last message, if you would be able to decrypt the phase one, the last message will be encrypted and first two messages will be decrypted. But we cannot see that because that's a tunnel inside a tunnel. Okay, so I hope you understand the quick mode. If you like my work, subscribe to my channel Share this video with your friends. Don't forget to press the bell icon. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.